Hello, and welcome to our Thursday night weekly Facebook program at the Adams County Historical Society. My name is Tim Smith, um, and this is uh, Mike Shen. Um, of course, I'm an employee here at the Adams County Historical Society. Mike Shen is a longtime supporter and volunteer of the society and a resident of New Oxford. And tonight, our topic will be uh, a little bit about um, New Oxford. We also have Michaela Schaefer, and she is with the New Oxford Area Chamber of Commerce. Go to. Okay, so uh, thank you, Tim. And um, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Shen, and um, we hope that we've put together both an informative as well as an engaging uh, program for you this evening. But before we get started, I'd like to uh, briefly turn this over to uh, Michaela for a, a greeting from uh, downtown New Oxford this evening. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Michaela, and I am the uh, Director of Membership and Marketing at the New Oxford Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, super excited to be here with everyone tonight, um, and hope I hope you all enjoy this program. Um, just to give you a little background, the New Oxford Area Chamber of Commerce um, is a local organization that was founded in 1960. Um, we currently serve over 100 businesses and include, uh, our, we serve over 100 businesses and individual members in New Oxford and the surrounding area. Um, our membership benefits include business services, promotion and marketing, networking, and more. Um, you might also know that we put on two main events every year when COVID isn't a factor. Um, these events are the Market on the Square, the annual antique uh, flea market, um, which is usually held in June, as well as the Harvest Day Festival and Parade. Um, we do have updates coming out about both of those events soon, um, so please stay tuned to our Facebook page for that. Um, and to learn more about these events or chamber membership, please feel free to visit our website, which is newoxford.org. Um, I'm so excited tonight to share some of this amazing history of our town with you. Um, so I'm going to hand things back over to Mike and Tim, um, and I hope you all enjoy the program. And uh, I'd like to add that we have a donut donate button on the bottom of our uh, Facebook post. So if you enjoy the content or would like to support us, please push the donate button. Right. So uh, with that, why don't we get started? OK. So tonight what we'll be doing is we'll be focusing in on the Oxford Town Treasures. And uh, periodically during the program, we'll be posting trivia questions. So will be uh, wanting to, uh, to see and eager to see some of your answers to our trivia questions scattered throughout. So let's get started with our first trivia question. Our first trivia question is, a human skeleton was found in a barn in New Oxford and no criminal investigation was undertaken. Why was that? And this is actually a question um, for you to think about as the program goes on, um, and we'll come back with the answer at the end of our program. So uh, start thinking about that and um, thinking of answers, and then we'll cover that at the end. Right, so um, let's actually then, uh, for those of you that may not be so familiar with uh, New Oxford itself, or, or Oxford Town as it was first uh, so named, um, what we have here is a, a, a copy of the uh, er, one of the earliest maps that shows the region uh, that we are in, um, the uh, 1751 Jefferson Fry map. What was really uh, exciting about this is that uh, if you scroll into the next slide, what you'll see is, is that uh, the trace of the Great Road from Philadelphia to North Carolina that passes right through what is now South Central Pennsylvania. And to just uh, uh, for for the next little for the next little bit to help you, uh, you can see where the Little Conewago uh, Creek actually crosses the Great Road. So this was actually a rather significant location in the earliest uh, days of uh, 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 colonial America. And this area that we live in uh, was settled in the 1730s and 40s by, of course, Scotch Irish and German immigrants. Uh, at the same time, there were Maryland settlers moving northward. And by 1740, the Monocacy Road was established. Now, there were early traces 
uh, paths and wagon roads that went through this area. But the Monocacy Road is the first early road, which of course today kind of mimics uh, the road that leads from uh, York uh, down through to um, Hanover, down through Littlestown into the Monocacy River in Maryland. But by 1747, the uh, uh, what Mike referred to as the Great Road or the road that comes across through what is now New Oxford and kind of split off uh, just uh, west of New Oxford and run through the Marsh Creek settlement uh, of Adams County was established. So it's about 1747 that settlement really gets underway in this area. But then as you see here with the 1775 map and then also the next one, uh, this 1811 map, you begin to see the development of the, uh, the infrastructure, the transportation routes. These are all public roads. And as you, we study these maps, we, we are able to extract out a great deal of information in terms of meeting houses, mills, locations uh, uh, that were essential in the earliest years of the settling of this, uh, of this region. So then um, we have uh, what, was, what became then a, a real uh, uh, transf transformational moment uh, because of the um, uh, Henry Kuhn uh, uh, and his father, Frederick Kuhn, establish um, uh, ownership of, uh, of, of the uh, various plots uh, that uh, then were stitched together to become then the, uh, what is now the region immediately uh, surrounding the, uh, the borough uh, of New Oxford and the township of Oxford itself. So um, we have here some of the original treasures, uh, original documents that, that trace this, uh, this moment in time in the 1792, 1793 era that we wanna share with you this evening. Yeah, this is the original patent deed to the property uh, uh, that would become New Oxford. It's interesting that, you know, in Pennsylvania, the process of uh, obtaining uh, uh, the actual deed to a land, you know, you, you were squatter, you occupied a piece of land, um, you uh, asked, you got a warrant for that piece of land, then you had the land surveyed, and you paid the proprietors of Pennsylvania for that land and then eventually received a patent deed. And this is the May, um, what, what date is in May, Mike? Um, it's May 1792. It's, uh, May 6th, I believe. May 6th, that's right, 1792. So this document is actually from that period and you can see it has the seal on it. Now, at the Adams County Courthouse, of course, they have deed books and all, often deeds are recorded in these deed books. And of course, your county has a deed book, but in many cases, we have the original deeds to the property that were issued at the time. Yeah, I should also mention that this is an incredibly uh, a, a great condition given, it, given its age. That's not true for all of the documents of this era, especially some of the surveys, for example. So this is a good example of where the, require, the need for a, a, a good archival um, uh, storage and conditions and treatment of these documents is really essential um, in moving forward. So what do we have next, uh, Tim, uh, from the uh, founding of the New Oxford by the well, you know, With the anticipation that Adams County would become its own independent county and break away from York County. And people realized this was going to happen at some point. Uh, the town of Oxford uh, was established. Um, and when they established the town, they surveyed the town and they created town lots. Should we go back to right. that? So um, on our next slide, uh, then what we'll have is, um, this is an image uh, that was taken back in uh, 20, uh, I think it's, uh, it's 2013 or so, um, of the uh, original town plat that uh, Henry Kuhn commissioned uh, the surveyor, um, uh, John Bolton, to uh, create, which established the town lots for uh, the, what is now the borough of New Oxford. Uh, what's very exciting about this is this document um, was uh, in uh, quite bad condition given its age. And uh, back in the 2012, 2013 region of uh, uh, area, the um, New Oxford Area Historical Society commissioned for its restoration. 
So this slide and then the next slide, which is an, a blow up or uh, an enlargement of that, uh, of those, of that town plat is uh, available for viewing at the, um, at the uh, uh, volunteers uh, fire department uh, here uh, right in town. What's interesting about this is that each piece of land in the town is given a lot number. And then there was a lottery held. Uh, and the lottery is a kind of interesting. A lot of the different towns in our area had lotteries and you would buy a lottery ticket for a minimal price. And then the ticket would have a number on it. And then they maybe they would put the lottery tickets in a large barrel and, you know, twirl them around. And um, uh, as I understand, in this case, they had two different uh, places where they reached into and got tickets out of. One of them was a barrel where they reached in, they pick out a ticket number and you might hold a ticket number, right. 45. number 45. And then they would go into the lot barrel and roll it around and pick out another number. And that would be the number of the lot that you won in the lottery. Now you didn't have to buy the lot that you acquired in the lottery. Um, usually it was the option to buy a certain lot so that more people would become interested in it. And, um, you know, the excitement would be that if you were fortunate enough to win one of the lots on the center square of the town, then you could sell that right to purchase that lot. Or maybe you'd open up a business on yeah, that. So uh, what is an incredible uh, treasure here at the Adams County Historical Society is the actual the actual lottery book that uh, uh, was used on the, uh, the day of April 1793, when uh, Henry Kuhn essentially, with, all, with the various individuals of the region, went through that lottery process. This is, uh, uh, I don't think this actually exists for the uh, community of Gettysburg, does it? We don't have a lot book, no. no, but we have a map of the town that shows who the winners of the lottery are. But this is the original in the original yeah. handwriting. So it has the name of the person holding the ticket, the ticket number, and then the lot number that they uh, won in the lottery. It's just right. a fabulous document. So let's move on then uh, to uh, the next. Uh, uh, so we have a trivia question for you, Michaela. So the first trivia question here is why did the Coon Bolton Oxford Town Plat include unnumbered town lots? And we have a couple of options for you. Uh, option A is the lots had already been purchased. B, the lots were not suitable for building. C, the lots were already occupied. Or D, I have no idea. <laughs> so we're going to... Uh, uh... While we're thinking about that, can can we show another document? Yeah, so let's uh, let's do that. So um, here is a document that's in our collection, and again, this is an original deed for one of the lots in New Oxford issued by um, the Coon family, Henry Coon, and this deed we mentioned that the patent deed for the property was dated uh, May, 6. Uh, May 6th. This is May 28th, 1794. Um, 1794. So, you know, 1792, we mentioned um, that he got the patent deed. And then 1793, we have the lottery book, right? Right. And this is in 1794. And this is one of the earliest deeds that we're able to find for a lot in New Oxford. And um, uh, I guess also what you're, uh, unfortunately, the feed won't show it, but when you examine this, this is a, a, a in beautiful condition. It's fragile, uh, but um, uh, the original seals are on this, so it's uh, it's the real McCoy. And it says on it, it's for lot number uh, sixty-two, and it's actually signed by Henry Kuhn and his wife Elizabeth. And it's fabulous that the deed was printed because a lot of the information on here is not handwritten on here, but uh, it's uh, printed on here. And it's printed by a uh, printer, um, John, uh, what is it? John Eddy in York, Pennsylvania. Right. So let's go to the answer then to the question. So a number of folks have actually um, um, uh, said that they thought it was B. Uh, the location was actually uh, unsuitable, but let's uh, click to the next slide. And this will help to explain 
So this is an insert of the town square and you see on the upper right left hand corner that uh, that area is in fact uh, unnumbered. If you click to the next, you'll see that in fact, that is the location of the Tung Coon Tavern. There are multiple places on the original town plat that are unnumbered. And uh, we now know quite conclusively that they were the property, that that's where property of the Coon family pre-existed. Not only the town uh, or the, uh, uh, the hotel, but then also a, 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 a tannery uh, further down to the west. So this is simply an example of the kind of notice that uh, would appear in the newspapers uh, next uh, for, um, uh, and uh, this is a, a, a blow up of actual, uh, of, from that lottery book that we, uh, that Tim would just, just showed you. Let's move on. And uh, we also have, um, we pulled uh, what we thought would be an incredible uh, um, document to uh, share with you. Uh, this is a very large uh, indenture or deed. Um, we, I don't think I have ever come across a, a deed of this, uh, of this size. It's tremendous. And it's, uh, Tim, uh, what's the, the details on that? Well, it's a deed from um, Henry Kuhn to Peter Deal. And I believe it's uh, 1801, uh, the 17th of December, 1801. And it's for much of the property that is uh, south and east uh, in the southeastern quadrant of the uh, town of um, uh, New Oxford today. And yeah, it's we're we're um, we're sorry that we just don't have the facilities and the equipment um, at this current location to give you a good uh, visual uh, uh, of these original documents. But um, um, at the new location, certainly that will be the case. Uh, I also like that these deeds are made out of uh, some kind of animal skin, vellum, uh, yes. is often referred to as. But this is one of the more interesting deeds that we have, and early deeds that we have in our collection. So let's move on then. And we're gonna move to a, uh, another uh, uh, trivia question. Okay, our next trivia question is, in 1809, Henry Gitt establishes a tavern at an important colonial era intersection east of Oxford town. What is the name of this tavern? Let us know in the comments, please. And, uh, uh, I guess, Mike, here we have a clue to the name of the tavern. Uh, right. And this actually is from a tavern sign that we have in the collections of the Adams County Historical Society. And this sign will be featured in our, our new museum at our uh, new facility. Uh, but uh, years ago, the original sign was given to the society. And you can see it's quite large. Right, so this photograph is actually uh, goes back to the ground, we believe in the 1920s um, for the, uh, for the uh, uh, you know, of the original Henry, uh, Henry Gitt uh, Tavern sign. And uh, Steve has actually uh, uh, given the correct answer. It's called cross keys. And if we go to the next slide, you see that sign as it appears at the moment at the Wolf House. This is the original sign in 1809 that then will be uh, one of the prominent uh, 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 items, uh, artifacts at the, at the new facility. And um, here uh, I have an artifact here to, that I wanted to talk about. And this is the uh, tavern license. We have a large collection of Adams County tavern license licenses. Of course, you know, there were tavern licenses in your county in this area while well, this is your county, but starting in 1800, uh, we hold the original um, uh, tavern licenses. And this is a tavern license from 1809 for Henry Gitt. And of course, it mentions that he has a public house of entertainment in Berwick Township. And you probably know that um, Bur that. Berwick Township, in, uh, that included the area of New Oxford. 
and it wasn't until I believe um, 1849, right, 1849 that that a, a Oxford Township was formed out of a Berwick Township. And the interesting point is that the township divide is essentially what is now Pennsylvania Route 94. On one side is uh, is uh, Berwick, the other side is Oxford. Oh. So here in this uh, 1844 uh, tavern license petition, it actually mentions that Henry Gitt has a tavern and the name of the tavern is the sign of the cross keys. So that's actually, we have that right in this 1844 uh, document. Right, and so uh, uh, here then, if we go to the next slide, um, what we uh, will see is that um, we have uh, not only um, uh, the location of the of the Cross Keys Tavern, the Gitz Tavern, as it's also known, but on the Great Road, which is now essentially US 30, uh, there are a few of the original early uh, stone mileage markers uh, that were established. And this particular one is uh, just east of uh, Cross Keys on the north side of the highway. And as you can see, if you can see here, it actually identifies Philadelphia, like I think 102 miles. York is maybe what, 16 miles? And then Gettysburg is maybe 13, 14 miles, something of that nature, I think. But a few of these early 19th century stone markers still exist. So let's go on. And of course, uh, we have here then uh, uh, an image of the original uh, of the original uh, tavern, um, and uh, down below, and then of course it was uh, the subject of uh, postcards and such yes. uh, over during the course of the twenty. And uh, let me show another artifact here in our collection. So um, uh, the original Cross Keys, Keys Tavern was torn down in the nineteen thirties, I think nineteen thirty six perhaps, and uh, by nineteen thirty eight they built. A Cross Keys Hotel, and that hotel would later be uh, the site of. Um, uh, uh, it's on the well. It's on the south. Across, e across Keys Village. Yeah. In the southwest corner. On the southwest corner, and so we actually have a book that was put together by the family that owned the Cross Keys Hotel, and it is filled with early pictures of the building um, before it was torn down pictures of the construction of the new hotel and uh, pictures and items concerning the hotel uh, after it was established. And it's these kind of fabulous resources that over the years have been given to the society that pre present a really nice picture of the history of these different sites. So let's move on now. Um... So we uh, uh, let's move into uh, what, into the middle of the 19th century. Um, the uh, the region is prospering, uh, and uh, the communities are prospering. And uh, this is a map from 1858 that shows uh, the insert for the uh, New Oxford or the Oxford. Uh, actually, in 1858, it was New Oxford, right, Tim? Yes. It was not Oxford Town. Yeah, originally it was called Oxford, but you know they had a problem because there was another community known as Oxford in Chester County, Pennsylvania. So they decided to change the name to New Oxford. Right. And I believe um, it's in the early 1820s that we find that happens. Uh, Do you know the date? Yeah, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about okay. how that happened uh, later this evening. But as you see here, there are there's already a, a growth of uh, of of, of, of a wide assortment of merchants, uh, uh, manufacturers, cigar manufacturers, etc. Uh, but then also um, uh, people that are tanneries and other uh, essential services and, and uh, providing wares. And it's a growth, it's an area, a region of growth. And so this, the community is, this is an image of uh, compliments of the uh, New Oxford Area Historical Society um, of the Lutheran Church on the north side of town that was built in 1860. There was actually a lot of building that was going on in 1860, including the school on, on uh, Philadelphia Street. And we can see how using modern technology, how that would look, have looked if it was our eyes back in 1860 right now. It's a beautiful, beautiful setting. And uh, then again, here we are, march, march up into the 1872. Um, 
you see all of the various uh, 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 merchants and uh, manufacturers from uh, mercantiles to, uh, to blacksmith shops, uh, barbers, et cetera, et cetera. And also the footprint of the community is growing, right, Tim? Yeah, um, it expanded, uh, you know, both north and uh, you can see here it expanded quite a distance out to the uh, west. Right. So if we go on to the next slide, then what we see is that this expansion actually takes place in the, in the first form of the expansion takes place in the 1880s with the Deals edition. And the Deals edition essentially, this is a, a copy of the survey of which we also have the original of the, uh, that was then the foundation for the incorporation of this land into then uh, the borough of New Oxford. So uh, there will have been over the years other editions, uh, but this was the first and uh, it's really quite a, a wonderful uh, artifact to have. So then what happens, Tim? We have 1863. What happens? Yeah, in of 1863? course, like many of the uh, towns or communities in Adams County, it was affected by the Gettysburg campaign and troops marching through the area. And we have a trivia question. I think so this was a pretty hard one. <laughs> so our next trivia question is, a famous military military brigadier general spent the evening of July 4th, 1863 in New Oxford. Who was this person and with whom did he lodge that evening? If you know the answer, let us know in the comments. Right, so um, this actually is uh, a, a part of uh, the important uh, story of uh, uh, New Oxford and the, uh, and the Battle of Gettysburg. And this is actually a clue. Uh, what do we have here, Tim? It looks like it's some uh, rails, some railroad ties and rails from a uh, railroad project. And from the, how the Confederates were, de or so were deconstructing. When the Southern Army came through the area prior to the battle, they destroyed some of our infrastructure, including warehouses along the railroad, and they destroyed the bridge over Conewago Creek. Uh, so we have our, somebody guessed that General Meade stayed in yeah, New Oxford, uh, uh, and General Gordon. And have a general Gordon. But on July 4th, we're specifically looking for someone who was responsible for the uh, rebuilding of the railroad bridges over the creeks that led into the area to allow goods and supplies to be brought through and back into the area. And we have a winner that uh, correctly identifies Herman Hauk as the individual. Uh, Jules Barrett, I believe, was one of oh, those. Oh, I know her. I Let me just say, I would not have gotten that one, Mike. Right. So <laughs> let's go to the, to the next slide uh, on this, because this will, and this is a, 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 a transcription of, um, her, from Herman Hauk's uh, remembrance, remembrances uh, that, of uh, the uh, communication that he sent uh, that evening of July 4th, 1863 at 11 p.m. from New Oxford. So because of the hour, and he mentions it in the, in the telegram, he actually stays in New Oxford that night. Right. Now, as far as where he stayed, I don't know if we have anyone that has, oh, yes, we have someone that has identified, Janie has identified the Barker House. Hate to say it, Janie, but we don't know, don't think that's the answer. <laughs> We don't actually know, do we? Tim? No, no. It's... However, we have inclinations of who they are, who they, he yeah. stayed with. And that yeah. one of the first, uh, most likely, we think, is his good friend, Joseph Gitt. Who was also a railroad engineer and surveyor. So while we're talking about railroads, let's kind of like ask this question. Well, if there's a railroad, isn't there going to be a train depot? Well, this insert that you first see on the bottom left is from the 1858 and it does really show down on the south end of town on Baltimore Street that there is a depot. But by the time we have an 1874 survey that was done, um, there is no such identification. But we do know that the, tra the, the train uh, tracks 
traverse two major thoroughfares, Baltimore Street and Pitt Street. So it really should be somewhere in one of those two locations. And then we have the surveys from the Deals edition that we just showed you that clearly shows that where the trains crossed on uh, Philadelphia, uh, Pitt Street, it was a major, major set of uh, commercial entities with warehouses and et cetera. But, and, and for those of you familiar with the tra train depot today, they know that it is actually on uh, Lincoln Way West, which would have been Pitt Street. And, uh, and so this is an early photograph. And now let's go to the, a uh, 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 small snippet that appeared in the new Oxford item and uh, I believe that was 1890, what's uh, 1892, 1890. And um, as you can see here in the underlined area, that it clearly gives the, the answer. The old uh, location for, for mounting and unmounting on the, the train was diagonal from where the current railroad station is actually located. So we believe, if you click to the next, that in fact, it is a part of this um, large commercial complex that was on the, um, along the train tracks. That was actually having a siding for getting on and getting off was actually a pretty common matter. You didn't really always have a depot. And, we, and then by the time we, uh, uh, get to a year later, we see that the land has been donated and then uh, construction is all underway. So this was a good example of, of, of just doing a, in, a research to pin down the, the, the uh, story of, of where this was and how it came to be. But then 10 years later, disaster strikes uh, the, uh, in the middle of the evening uh, there, uh, the the the, uh, the depot burns down, and uh, it then becomes is reconstructed, uh, um, and the year later. So the depot that we see today is actually uh, the rebuilt uh, depot um, in 19, from 1903 that um, uh, what was originally built in 1902. and a postcard of what it looked like in the early 20th century uh, with uh, passenger service to, Phil uh, to uh, Baltimore uh, and daily and, uh, and how, what it looked like uh, last year. Okay, Tim, uh, do you wanna say a little uh, something about the Miller Building? Oh, well, this is uh, just an image, one of the many images from the Adams County Historical Society that show the uh, development of New Oxford over the years. And of course, this is the building that it still stands today prominently in the center of the square of New Oxford. And uh, Mike, I think when you first saw this photograph, you pointed out something very interesting about it. Yeah, so let's click to the next trivia question. Michaela, what do we have? So we are looking, let's go ahead and look at this picture. And if you're looking at this picture, do you see anything that seems odd or unexpected to you? Um, let us know in the comments if you see anything strange. And we do have a clue for you. So let's click to the clue. And uh, there, that's the clue. And um, let's talk a little bit now um, about the, the Miller Building. The Miller Building is on the Northwest corner. It occupies the site of where the old barn and stables for the uh, Coon Tavern were orig was originally located. Um, it has always, for uh, many, many years, been the, the site for a number of, of businesses. Of yeah, restaurants, of course, today, a coffee shop and a store. Yes, and in fact, that's where the Deja Brew is currently located, right? Um, on, the, on the corner. So, but we have here, let's see if we have any answers to... Hmm, I don't see uh, a, a good a good answer here. Uh, they created it back 74, wagon train came through town. Um, well, okay, so why don't we move on? Let's, uh, the, the, the thing that is, we think is odd or unusual about this is look at the direction uh, that the wagon is, is pointed 
And in fact, it is going against the circulation of the, <laughs> of the traffic around the circle. I and think, we have a first-hand yeah. account from a descendant of the Millers who said that uh, his great-grandfather would pick up the supplies at the railroad station, bring them back up to the Miller, uh, to the building in, by wagon, and deliberately cut across and go to the left instead of having to go all the way around the circle. So early on, he ignored the accepted and established practices of the circle. Of stay right. Yeah. Exactly. And we have the growth of other uh, industries. Here's an early, early picture of the Livingston Shoe Factory that's located up in, uh, off of North Water Street. And uh, it was a major uh, 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 employer of the region uh, during this era. And here are a couple uh, images from our collection, artifacts. We actually have some original photographs of uh, the Livingston Shoe Company, including a couple that actually show uh, what it looked like inside the building. So if, uh, you know, if you're interested in, uh, at some point, you know, uh, you can um, uh, visit these, maybe perhaps on our website. You know, a lot of our photographs are on uh, the Adams County Historical Society website in our past perfect collection of photographs, which is searchable online. Okay, so um, let's move on along here. And, um... We also, you know, another important element of any uh, community are the blacksmith shops. And this uh, uh, photograph was uh, uh, in, has been in the collection of the New Oxford Area Historical Society. And, we no, and no one ever really knew where it was located. So we did some uh, research. And uh, what we saw was that, in fact, this, all of the features line up very well to be uh, located on North Peter Street. And once we identify where it's located, we're able to find uh, the um, uh, uh, ads uh, for, uh, by John Keats Hertz, um, who uh, was the proprietor of this, uh, of this, and this is his family. And, um, and then, of course, you know, this being in black and white, it's a little bit sort of uh, uh, distant. But we can use uh, technology today to bring these people uh, to life. This is the family. These are the, this is the blacksmith. This is the horse. These are the people that you almost feel as though were, you were meeting on the street this morning. We've done something similar uh, where we look at and have this uh, image of, a, of the post office and, uh, and combined with the, uh, with the uh, uh, barbershop. And so we have a trivia question too. So our next trivia question is, what unique or unusual item do you see in this photo, and where in New Oxford do you think this photo was taken? If you think you know the answer, go ahead and leave a comment below. Right, so uh, it's actually quite unusual to see uh, the co-location of the barbershop and the post office, but uh, it's not so un uh, 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 out of the ordinary in the sense that uh, these are people that are looking to make money. Uh, they're uh, Postmaster gets uh, his appointment, uh, uh, and uh, so here we see the uh, the ad for that. Let's see if anyone southwest corner of the square courthouse. No, it's pretty close. Getting there, yeah. Let's go to the slide, and uh, this is the location as we see it today. This is on what is now called uh, um, Hanover Street number four and number six of Hanover Street. So it is kind of in the southeast corner of the square and just a little bit down yes, on the, down a little, down a little bit. bit. Yeah, so notice how the elevations have changed so dramatically over the, over the years. So let's go on to the next one. And we can actually do a matchup of these images to show the people uh, where they were standing and where they were uh, sort of chilling out. And in terms of the unique feature, I want to bring to your attention this uh, barbershop pole that is in the right-hand side of the image. I don't think we've I've ever seen a, a, a vintage a barbershop pole yeah. of that nature. It's really quite beautiful. And of course, we have uh, Charles Himes of New Oxford. 
And uh, Charles Himes was kind of an interesting uh, resident of the town. Uh, uh, many of you probably know the Himes residence is on the um, southwest uh, corner of the square uh, where um, Pitt Street comes into the center of the town. And uh, Charles Himes uh, had graduated from Dickinson College and was somewhat of an inventor. And as a matter of fact, he was a amateur photographer and had created a wet, a dry plate process where he could record negatives and then make prints off the negatives. He belonged to a uh, club of uh, photographic enthusiasts that would share stereo cards with each other. And in this photograph, which dates to the time of the Civil War, he's actually holding uh, a stereo card in his hand. Let's go to the next one. And uh, one of the things he took a photograph of uh, on the top uh, left here is the Washington House from 1859, which would be the original Coon Tavern. And after Coon uh, had sold it a few owners later, um, uh, it was actually owned by Charles Himes' grandfather, George Himes, who was a very good friend of Thaddeus Stevens, as I understand. So he's, in 1859, he recorded a photograph of uh, his grandfather's tavern. And it was printed on this really unusual blue paper. So it was an unusual process. But I'd like to point out that that's 1859. There is only one other photograph recorded outdoors in Adams County that I know of that predates that image. All right, so let's go to the next slide. Oh, we got a trivia question. Oh, we have a trivia question. Michaela? All right. Our next trivia question is, what Confederate general passed through New Oxford on June 27th, 1863, and where were he and his men headed? So with that, let's uh, uh, go, on to the uh, go on to the next slide because it will, uh, this will actually be a clue. So uh, on um, the evening of uh, June 28th, 1863, uh, the Confederate Army, after passing through New Oxford and York, Pennsylvania, arrived at Wrightsville in hoping, hoping to destroy or capture the Wrightsville-Columbia Bridge. And uh, federal authorities, anticipating that uh, they might, the Southern Army might try to cross and attack Harrisburg from the rear, destroyed the bridge. They meant to blow it up and just drop uh, you know, a section of the bridge into the ground. And um, what ended up happening was uh, the whole bridge caught on fire. And, uh, uh, and it's kind of unusual. Uh, Charles Himes was visiting, I believe his uncle's property uh, in Col uh, not too far from Columbia, uh, I think near Mount Joy in Lancaster County. And on his way back on June 5th, 1863, he recorded an image of the Wrightsville Bridge. It is of course, the only known photograph of the bridge because it burned in a massive fire on June 28th, uh, a few, a day few day weeks day. later, yeah. Right. So then, getting to the question and the answer for our trivia, we no. have various answers. We have um, uh, Earl uh, Early. Early, we have... Um, well, see, Juber Early's division did pass through Eastern Adams County on June 27th, 1863, but three of the brigades passed north of New Oxford with uh, Early himself. And it was, it was John B. Gordon's brigade. And uh, who got that? David. Oh, David Mao, a friend of ours, yes. got the answer. Uh, and that uh, he passed through uh, on June 27th, uh, with about 2,000 men, Georgians and some Virginia cavalrymen, uh, and they camped the night of June 27th near Farmers. But and, uh, uh, we have a letter, uh, uh, there is, exists a letter yeah. uh, written by uh, Charles Francis Hines that describes that day as they uh, yeah. marched through town. So let's go to the next slide. There, here is a view recorded in 1862 undoubtedly taken from a window in the house of Charles Francis Himes, his father, of course, owned it at time William Himes, and we're looking east through the square of New Oxford 
and this would be the route a year later, or in, in this case, maybe just a, you know, a few months later that the Confederate army be marching. And in a letter written in October of 1863, Charles Himes described her advance. The dirty, ragged, lousy, and the hair-lipped rascals from Georgia and Virginia, Gordon's Brigade. They had a rather fine cut and looked every inch the fighting men. They were old Stonewall Jackson's men and notwithstanding their appearance were not to be despised. As they said, Uncle Sam didn't furnish their clothes, that they did not dress in their best clothes to do dirty work. They were very orderly, only calling out to us we're back in the union, ain't we glad? And we don't know why you men don't, in black, don't put on the blue. The rebels are here. They were very anxious to know what we thought of them and said they only wanted to let us know the meaning of war, that they had felt it, but they would not imitate the conduct of our soldiers who wasted every section they passed through. Of course, I cannot say or do anything that would encourage them in the invasion, but they were there was much truth in their statements and logic in their, audi in their arguments. They seemed very sincere and earnest, said the old union was a grand thing, but it had gone away forever. That they were not three month men or three year men, that they were a hundred year men. All right, so this is a good example of the, of the letters that still exist. Um, uh, by uh, uh, Charles Francis Hines, mm -hmm. as well as other letters uh, uh, to Charles yeah. Francis Hines that document this this moment in time. Yeah. And this is the uh, this is the home uh, where uh, we believe uh, on the southwest corner of the of the square where he uh, took the photograph. We well, I it's either the second level or the attic window, and I personally believe it was likely the attic window. So as to get the best bird's eye view and to uh, um, not have the destruction of those tree branches. And this is that was an 1880s photographs of the of the yeah, Himes house. Right. So now, um, since we're talking 1860, here is a treasure that it just exists that exists within the historical society that uh, I was just flabbergasted to see when it first uh, uh, popped open popped up. This is a uh, hand drawn uh, map. Uh, by um, uh, George Emmert, and George Emmert was, uh, had Emmert's Corner, uh, a mercantile on the north, uh, where the, on the northwest corner of the uh, Carlisle Street in the square. And this is a map that, were, that he had drawn out of his remembrances as a 14-year-old boy in 1860 of where the, what the town looked like. It shows not only all of the various, the square, the, 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 the various streets, where people were living, groves of trees, orchards, and uh, even swimming holes of where they were swimming as young boys. And if you go to the next slide, that's the Emmert's Corner. And then if you go to the next slide, you'll see here is some of the is an insert of that uh, of that um, uh, of that map that shows the town square, and then if you go to the next, we'll see, do an even further uh, insert that shows this area around the tavern, the Washington the Washington Tavern. Notice that um, it identifies a well. Now let's go to the next shot, and you can see here this is the. Uh, the 1859 uh, uh, shots by uh, Charles Francis Himes. You saw one of them earlier. These are stereo. And there in the circle is that well. So it's just tremendous. And then we also wanted to talk about one of the um, best remembered citizens of New Oxford, and that would be Dr. Michael Dietrich Gottlieb Heffer. And uh, uh, Peffer uh, was from um, Germany. He uh, immigrated to the United States in the 1820s, became a resident of New Oxford about 1821, if I remember correctly. Um, he uh, was a veteran of the Battle of Waterloo. And in one account, it says that he wore a scar from the Battle of Waterloo on his cheek. That's right. And you can see he's a very weathered man, but he was also an incredibly accomplished man.
good friends with Thaddeus Stevens. Very well educated. And highly educated. So this is his house that occurs on the, uh, uh, his residence that was on uh, 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 Philadelphia Street, on the north side of Philadelphia Street, on the corner of uh, what is now Berlin Street and uh, Philadelphia Street. So let's go on. And uh, he, uh, and of course, uh, it was uh, 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 Dr. Pfeiffer, uh, or Pfeffer, uh, who established the Medical Collegiate Institute on the east side of town, which you see identified in green. This photograph that you see here on the right is the only known photograph of the institute during its operation. All of the other photographs that are in the collection are after it has been abandoned. And not, uh, you know, not surprisingly, the image was recorded by Charles Francis Himes, who attended uh, the academy as a youth. That's right. And um, uh, it's very hard to see, but he is uh, um, above the threshold of the, uh, of the, uh, um, of the institute is uh, the uh, is Greek uh, uh, theme of um, Athena and Hygieia. Athena and Hygieia. And these are the goddesses of uh, wisdom and of health. And uh, this phrase also existed uh, above the Acropolis. So being a very learned man, he adopted it for the medical institute. Itself. And I wanted to mention that that document there in the previous slide, that is actually a report card from our collection at the Adams County Historical Society. After it uh, uh, ceased to be a, 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 a medical institute, um, the grounds uh, of the, of the uh, facility actually was used for a long period of time, for at least a 30, 40 year period by the community for holding fairs and various things, it, even to the point where children would all, would just uh, go, take little excursions to the old institute itself, as you see here. I'd imagine it was a haunted house. It was most likely a haunted house. And of course, <laughs> these children um, come to life again by the marvels of modern technology. These could be easily our grand, our little uh, grandchildren. Oh, so this is the Himes house. And um, well, you know, I'm Himes, I'm, this is the Peffer house. And uh, there are articles in the paper where it is uh, torn down around 1915, I believe. And um, uh, so we have a couple images to record of it. Again, this is from a Charles Francis Himes album. And I think we're coming up to uh, uh, the trivia question that yeah, you said so it before. Yeah, we have a trivia question. And we're right back to the beginning. And Michaela, what is that trivia question? All right, we're back to our original trivia question. And that was, a human skeleton was found in a barn in New Oxford and no criminal investigation was undertaken. Why was that? And... Uh, uh, we should mention that obviously that uh, in 1915 they tore down uh, Peffer's house. Right. And, for, and that, that became uh, the uh, location for Adam Sheely's new home. That's on the uh, northwest corner of Berlin Street. So let's get to the answer to this question. Uh, we should mention someone did get it. Someone did uh, uh, get it. Oh. Andrew uh, had it. Uh, Stephen. Stephen. Ah, Stephen. Congratulations. And then, and here is the um, oh, here is the uh, article that appears that shows the uh, that yes, indeed, as they were tearing down the barn when that property was sold, um, what do they find? But they find a skeleton from Dr. Pfeiffer's. Um, uh, in the in the barn. So, um, Steve Roth, you uh, you know your local history. 
So with that, we, uh, we hope that uh, you enjoyed. We hope that you have learned. We hope that uh, this has been a useful uh, uh, last few minutes. We want to uh, also um, just reiterate that um, the documents, many of the documents and much of the work that uh, we presented to you this evening are only possible because of the incredible collection that exists here at our historical society, our community's historical society. Those records of our ancestors are impor as important to us today as, it will, as they were ever to them years ago. And it is our duty to actually honor them by preserving them as best we can. So we hope that you have learned something. We hope that you have share a similar view and we look forward to uh, 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 learning more and sharing that with you in the future. And uh, I'd like to remind everyone that we do these programs uh, every Thursday night. So you can uh, check in next Thursday night and see a topic of ex historical interest. And if you're interested in these programs and you want to help support the Adams County Historical Society and our efforts, please make a small donation. There's a donate button here at the bottom of the post. And uh, we appreciate it very much. And uh, well, we hope to see you next week. Oh, and uh, Michaela, uh, uh, maybe you have some thoughts, final thoughts from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to both Tim and Mike um, for putting all of this together. Uh, it was a great program and I'm so happy we could partner with you to uh, bring this to the community. Um, I had a lot of fun and I learned a lot of new new things that I didn't know before. Um, and I'd also like to give a quick shout out to Andrew who's behind the scenes taking care of all the technical side of things. Uh, really appreciate that. Um, so thank you to the Adams County Historical Society and the New Oxford Historical so Area Historical Society um, for working with us on this program. Um, and thank you to everyone who attended tonight. Um, I hope you enjoyed the program and uh, definitely tune in to the Adams County Historical Society's uh, Thursday night programs in the future as well. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.